Today we're going to be doing a console which I've recently worked on and this console I originally worked on on a live stream. It's a PlayStation 5 and it originally came to me because it had HDMI trace damage. Now the trace damage was caused by I believe another business and when I've repaired this I've tested it and made sure it all worked and then it's got back to the business and they've got in touch and said it's not working. It's not the display which isn't working though. Apparently, it's now got no power. So it's come back to me and we're gonna try and do a repair on it. Uh, maybe cover it under warranty, I don't know. It depends what's actually caused it. But literally, all I did to this was trace repair and it worked absolutely fine. I did cover it on a live stream, like I said. I do live stream on Monday and Friday, usually. Uh, it's been a little bit mixed up in the, the past few weeks. I've had a few things going on, but yeah, I did cover it on a live stream and uh, it was working fine when it left the workshop. So, yeah, not sure what's going on. But if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, then I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to support the channel, you can do that by heading over to Twitch and becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then it's absolutely free for you to support me but it does give me around about $2.50 for every person that does it. It's a massive help to the channel and I really do appreciate it. There's also some affiliate links in the video description for Amazon Prime. Even if you don't buy anything that's in the list, if you just click on one of those links, set it as a bookmark, then every time you use Amazon I'll get a little bit of a kickback on your purchases. But with that being said, let's get into this repair. So let's just find out first of all what's actually going on with this. So this is one like I said that I did cover on a live stream and apparently now it doesn't turn on so yeah. Not really sure what to think. Okay, destroy button works. And two second blood. Well, yeah, that has definitely got a two second blood. Now, I do have a theory on this. The theory for this is that the liquid metal has leaked. And the reason I say that is because the business in question took the foam protection off the APU. I've got a feeling that the liquid metal has leaked and it's shorting out some components on the board. Liquid metal is obviously conductive and yeah the business has said that if it's because of that then to obviously invoice him for the extra work but yeah i don't know but let's take it apart anyway and see if we can figure out what's going on all right so it does have one of my warranty stickers so let's just pop that off so i don't think this even got back to the customer to be honest then you literally got back to the business and that was it so the reason I'm doing this video is because number one, I want to figure out what's going on. Number two, I want to cover my own back if something else has failed. Because if something else has failed, then obviously, you know, I can't really be doing work for free. So, yeah, I mean, if something's failed that's out of my control, then we, need, we obviously need to build for it. So I'll get this apart. I'm going to fast forward through this and obviously it's a time consuming process. So... Once I've taken it apart, we'll try and figure out what's gone on and hopefully get it fixed. Way too many screws. Way too many screws. And I'm seeing liquid metal there for starts. I'll show you that under the, well, not under the scope. I'll show you it closer in a minute. This is splattered everywhere in transit. Absolutely everywhere in transit by the look of that there. Because that wasn't there when I put it back together. <sighs> okay, so before I even take this board out, let me just show you what I can see. Can you see it? By the HDMI port? Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Yep. Oh dear. 
it's everywhere. This is why I stress the importance of that piece of foam. That liquid metal is now everywhere and I've got some severe cleaning to do. Not just on the board, on the case, under chips, everywhere. I do need to take pictures to document this. So I'm going to do that and also I did have the business send me around about 20 pieces of foam. The foam pieces off all of the PS4s that he's taking these off. So at least I can replace the foam and put a fresh one on or put a replacement foam on. But this is just ridiculous. It's not the first time. And I know I'm probably going to get some comments in the comments down below saying that I should take responsibility for this. But at the end of the day, I didn't take the foam off. I'm not responsible for taking the foam off. And yeah, I can only work with what I've got. I can't replace the foam on every single one of these that comes in with trace damage where the foam has been removed. And believe me, that is a lot. I've got one in the queue right now. There's a, I get a lot of consoles from various different businesses where they take that foam off and it's needed. It is absolutely 100% needed. It doesn't matter whether it's being picked up in person, it doesn't matter whether I'm dropping it off by hand and very gently placing it down on the table. Eventually, eventually, that console is going to move and it is going to splatter that liquid metal all over the place. Well, let's see what we can do anyway about cleaning this up. Um, I'm obviously not happy about this in the slightest. All I can do is try and fix it. Right, so I've got some pictures and I've also just been and grabbed a bunch of these pieces of foam because I did contact the business a while ago and said, look, you need to stop taking the foam off these because obviously it's not good for them. So they sent me a bunch of these. And yeah, I think there's something like 17 pieces of foam here, so I can at least put one back on. Um, but along with this console and the rest of this week's batch, they sent me the 17 or whatever it is pieces of foam so as I can put them back on consoles. Uh, I kind of understand why they take it off. So the business in question, the reason they take the foam off is because they use a BGA machine similar to the one I've got in the workshop and in fact it's exactly the same but they use a BGA machine to do HDMI ports because it's quicker it's probably easier I don't know I've never used a BGA machine for a HDMI port actually yes I have sorry once um, and that was because my hot air failed but it doesn't take two minutes to put it back on there is adhesive on the bottom of these so there is a strip of adhesive there and you know that is pretty sticky and it's not hard to put them back I just don't understand why they wouldn't put them back to be honest so yeah I'm gonna have to build for this because it's not the first time and I can't keep doing it for free I can't keep fixing a mess that's out of my control it's not like I've put too much liquid metal on it's not like I've uh, neglected to uh, do the job properly that it was sent in for or anything like that it's just genuinely not my fault and I can't keep working for free it's not fair um, you know I at the end of the day I run a business and that business needs to make money and for every one of these that I'm not doing uh, or rather that I'm doing rather than doing a normal job I'm losing money or I could be spending that time editing videos or I could be spending that time with my family or replying to comments on YouTube. There are so many other things what I could be doing to fill my day rather than having to deal with liquid metal spills because of something that's not my fault. And yeah, like I said, it's just not fair. And not only that, it costs me money. If I'm replacing the liquid metal to start with and then I've got to replace it a second time because it's spilt out through something that's not my fault, then that's costing me money and you might think oh it's only a few pence so it's only about a pound or something but no it's not because you don't get that many liquid metal 
uh, applications to a tube of liquid metal and it's something like 35 40 pound per tube so it's not like it's you know thermal paste where you get you know 100 200 300 consoles out of one 20 gram tube you get a five gram gram tube and you're using about you know 0.7 grams or something like that every time you replace the liquid metal and it's 35 to 40 pound per tube of liquid metal so they're not free and it's not cheap either you know it costs me money every single time and it's money i shouldn't have to spend but uh, yeah, I'm going to stop ranting. There's liquid metal all over this. Let's clean it up. So let's zoom in here. But I'm basically just soaking my syringe with isopropyl alcohol. And what that will do is it will allow the liquid metal to group up into a ball. I don't know how it works. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments. But it's basically going to group up the liquid metal and allow me to remove it all properly that screw's got to come out because there's liquid metal underneath it i wonder actually i wonder if magnets work let's have a look mm, not properly not properly all right so someone asked me if like magnets work that's why i decided to try it but uh yeah evidently not uh, so that's probably a better example how that's grouping up there into a little ball So it's not incredibly difficult to clean up but Like I said, it's time-consuming So once it's grouped up into a ball I can Kind of grab it with tweezers like that And then that will allow me to lift it off and clean it up fully so you can see there where I've not applied any isopropyl alcohol and that's fairly difficult to pick up whereas as soon as I start to apply actually let's just group it up into a ball like this and I'll show you what I mean so I'll group it up into a ball so it's easy to group up into a ball if I try and lift that given the fact that there's no isopropyl alcohol there you see it's not picking it all up fully now if I take a bit of isopropyl alcohol on my cotton swab and group it up again it kind of solidifies it enough to be able to pick it up with tweezers like this look you see that and that picked up so much more liquid metal and you can reuse it because the isopropyl alcohol will evaporate but essentially what I can do is just clean all this up group it into a ball and then lift it off well I think that's cleaned up from there so I need to pop under the microscope for the motherboard so you can see why this has got a blue light of death here it's literally just everywhere absolutely everywhere so yeah let's just start up here so you can see here we've got some liquid metal there so I'm just gonna go around I'll fast forward through this now but I'll go around and just uh, clean it all up as best as I can So around here is what's going to be causing the main issue because we've got exposed test points there on the actual APU itself or around the APU itself rather and I'm hoping and praying that it's not gone underneath the APU because if it's gone under the APU it's game over. This is where it gets awkward because I can't actually physically get to that bit there so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the cotton off the cotton swab like that and if I dunk that in IPA I should be able to get a much closer clean 
and then just hope that it didn't go underneath. So now I need to try and get whatever's underneath this tape. Alright, I think I've got it all. Well, from there. There's still bits randomly dotted all over the place. Right, I think I've covered it all. I think. So let's do what should have been done in the first place. Just put a piece of foam there. It doesn't matter whether it sticks down or not. The point is it's there to catch any overspill. Okay, there we go. That's enough. And now, because the foam is on there, it shouldn't overspill again. Right, okay, so pretty much ready to give this a test now. Wow. I think there's still liquid metal under the IPU. Wow. He's either that or he's done some permanent damage. So, now I've got to figure out where that liquid metal's damaged. Or find more liquid metal. Okay, so there's a little bit dropped off that foam. So this foam... Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. The foam's contaminated. The foam that I've got sent is contaminated because they've all been stuck together. Wow, this is getting really annoying. Look, just, here's an idea, just don't take the frigging thing off. Like, it's not needed to take it off. So, now not only have I got to try and sort this out. I've also got to sit there and try and figure out why the hell it's not turning on. I don't know whether that's going to be the cause. Or whether we're actually going to have liquid metal on a very dangerous area or if it's just completely created a permanent short underneath the APU if it's created a permanent short under the APU then it's game over because there is no way that I can lift off the APU well I could I think it has to be honest I could lift the APU off but is it worth it Yep, it's gone under the APU. That might be game over. That might be game over. Right, this is... Wow, that is... There's a lot under there. I have just messaged the business. I do not know if I can talk if I can fix that. I don't know if I can fix it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick that out of there. So looking at the opposite side, that's what it should look like. We should be able to see liquid metal. 
Uh, sorry, not liquid metal. We should be able to see solder balls, not liquid metal. So, one thing I can try doing is flooding down some isopropyl alcohol from this side. Okay, so it's come out. It's come out this side, as you can see. But the question is, am I going to be able to get it the liquid metal from under there? I very much doubt it. So I'll, I've I've dipped my brush in IPA. Wow, well, there is actually some coming out. Look at that. That's just clear cut evidence of what's happened. I don't know if that's got it, to be honest. This, this thermal pad needs to come off. I need to be able to see. So that has to come off. And um, yeah, there's thermal there's liquid metal all over the thermal pad as well. Lovely. I mean the thermal pad isn't needed, it was removed in a later revision. I think I've got it all from there now. Or oh, very near. I just hope I've got it. I think I have. I think that got it. But I'm not 100% sure. Honestly, I'm probably about as annoyed as I'm ever going to be with that. I'm not happy at all at this. The entire situation, this should never have happened. We should not be in this mess. This is my last attempt before calling it quits. I can't continue on this. I just can't. Wow. It's staying on. Wow. There you go. We've got a white light. Okay. I'm going to shut this down. That's working. I need to put this all back together. Yeah. That could have been avoided. That could have been avoided. You should not be taking that foam off. One slip, one bump, one knock, one bang, and it's game over. Liquid metal under the APU, and it's dead. If that went any further than what I could reach with this toothbrush, or with what I could reach with bristles, it would have literally been the end of this console the only way to fix it in that situation would have been to lift off the APU completely reboard it because you can't just lift it off and put it back on it's got over a thousand solar balls underneath it and then yeah completely reboard it and then manage to um, solder it back on without damaging the APU the only way you can do that is with a machine like that behind me yeah, yes, I do have one, but it's not the point. I don't have a stencil for the PS5 APU, so it would have been a manual rebore. It would have took around about eight hours, and it wouldn't have been worth it. It would not have been worth it. So, yeah. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Do you think this could have been avoided? Um, I am not taking responsibility for this at all. There is no way I should ever take responsibility for this. I didn't take the foam off, and... Um, yeah, I can only work with what I'm, what I'm giving. If I had the foam there, then it would have stayed on. I never take those foam pieces off unless I absolutely have to because I've, I'm suspecting liquid metal spills. That is the only time I ever take them off. Ever. Period. That should not be taken off. 
so yeah let me know what you think down in the comments down below the main thing is this is working and hopefully it's not going to get damaged again um and hopefully that foam is going to stay there because like i said it is needed uh, if you do enjoy this type of video, like I said earlier on, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to support me in any way, then you can do so by heading over to Twitch and becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber. It's absolutely free if you've got Amazon Prime, but it does massively help me out. And also you can become a channel member by clicking on the join button below the video. Or you can become a Patreon sponsor using the Patreon link in the video description. If you want to buy anything from Amazon, there's some affiliate links down there as well. So if you want to just click on one of those links and then just do your normal Amazon shopping and whatever, then I get a kickback off that as well. It does massively help and I do really appreciate it. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.